Lick Art Material Store here in Kansas City, and today we're going to be filming a My Husband Picks Out My Art Supplies. Let's get going. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. And as you can tell from the title of this video, it is My Husband Buys My Art Supplies. I thought this would be a fun video. He does, I mean, he knows about art supplies, but not really what I have. He knows the mediums I like. I know there's certain mediums he likes. So I was curious what he would pick out. Now, the only thing, he had to keep it under $100. So that's almost hard to do when you go to Blick, I know. But let's see what he picked out. Okay, let's first talk about the charcoal sticks he got. He got white, sanguine, bistre, and a black. Okay. Viconta at Paris. All right, we will swatch these out in a moment. So these are very nice colors. Um, this is a new one. Uh, that's a very nice brown, cool tone brown color. Very nice. And these, to go along with it, these are soft applicators that you can blend. Um, it says pan pastels on here, but you can blend any medium with these. Charcoal, graphite, whatever you want works very well. So that is a wonderful addition to my charcoal box. And I will swatch all of these out in just a moment and do a little demonstration with them. And then what do we have here? So this is very exciting. Um, he's not very familiar with, with the watercolor world. So the fact that he picked these out is just fantastic. My favorite watercolors are the M. Graham, and they are a honey-based watercolor. And he picked out all Sennelier, which is also a honey base. So I have a feeling I'm going to like these. I've never even tried a Sennelier watercolor, but I'm assuming that it's going to be good quality. I've not had anything bad from Sennelier before. And let's see, we've got a brown pink, a Snellier yellow deep, looks like a marigold, hooker's green, and I'm best guessing he picked this out only because it said hookers on it. <laughs> um, ooh, ultramar ultramarine deep. That's nice, very nice. Ooh, cadmium red purple. Nice. Perfect. I have something in mind for that. And then it looks like a just a neutral tint. But I think this the Sennelier le leans a little more in the uh purple side. Purple. Um the ones I have right now, I use a lot of the Payne's Gray, which is obviously a more bluish color. And if this is if this swatches out how I think, it might be pretty close to Moon Glow from Daniel Smith. But we'll have to see because these labels are always misleading. So let's, I'm going to put these in their own little special palette. I think Jason did a wonderful job. Give him a thumbs up for this video if you think he did good. I think he did a wonderful job. He went into Blick not knowing hardly even what aisle to go to. So the fact that he picked out like almost, I mean, look, he's got everything I need. He's got the um, primary colors. I don't know if he realized that. He's got some beautiful secondaries and a neutral tint. I don't know how much better you could do to pick out watercolors. Uh, maybe he brushed up on his uh, Art 101 before he went in there. I don't know. Maybe he did. Um, and I knew I knew I was going to get charcoal. He loves them. So this is a wonderful variety. This is going to be a lot of fun. So let's get into this video and swatch all these new goodies. Right, we are going to swatch the neutral tint first. Okay. 
very lovely shade. And let's compare it to that Moon Glow that I was after. Now that Moon Glow has a little more red in it. This is more of a cooler tone purple, which is nice because it's not exactly alike, but I think this is going to be wonderful and I'm very excited to get this shade. Ultramarine Deep, and I'm curious if this is going to be a little more granulating than the rest. Okay, and it's not completely dry yet, but it certainly looks like it's going to granulate to me. Um, comparing it to, I do have a Daniel Smith Ultramarine. Now this one says deep, and this one's just a normal um, ultramarine blue. Kind of similar. Oop, let me get that glare off of it. This uh, looks to have a little more action on the paper, though, so that'll be fun. All right, now we've got the hooker's green. And this looks like a very true deep green. Looks like a beautiful color. I don't know if I'm going to have anything that looks like this. Maybe my Viridian? I don't know. That is such a pretty green. That's like a Christmas green. Uh, yeah, the closest one here is a, oh, a green yellow by M. Graham. But actually, it's got a lot more blue in it. So this is a very true green, and that's just beautiful. A beautiful green. Now, this is an interesting one because it says brown pink. Brown pink, folks brown pink. Now just looking at it, it looks like that, I don't know, even know how to explain it, just that weird in-between greenish yellow that I love. I love these colors. I have a fingernail polish this color. I think it's called Princess Fiona or something like that. Oh yeah. Certainly doesn't give me brown pink, which is good because I really enjoy this color. Now, I was looking here and something close to it. Well, it's actually closer than I would like to think. Is Azo Green by M. Graham. I think M. Graham has more yellow in it. Now we have the Sennelier Yellow Deep. Beautiful color. Beautiful color in this, um, in my palette here. It looks like a marigold. Slightly more orange than what the camera's picking up. It's just, it's true, it's a true marigold. Very vibrant yellow. Beautiful. I don't have a yellow that matches this, so that is a nice welcomed addition. Yeah, it's definitely different than both of those. Very, very vibrant, very crisp. I like it a lot. Now, the reds in my collection are very lacking. The only red I have is Pyro Scarlet by Daniel Smith. This looks much deeper, much richer. 
Oh, it's definitely giving me Christmas berry vibes. Okay, this one's separated a little bit in the tube. And I guess I see that from time to time. It doesn't really bother me much. I just stirred it up in my palette. All right, this is the Sennelier palette that Jason picked out. You really couldn't do a better job of picking out a nice base of primaries and like a starter pack to get to know Sennelier. Beautiful colors. I'm very excited. I have a feeling I'm going to do something, something with a Christmas berry, maybe frost on it, and or maybe some snow so I can use this neutral tint. I'm used to using a bluish shadow color and i'm excited to use this more purpley shadow color so maybe we'll do some snow on a christmas berry you know this, this everything's really pretty and i'm excited to do a practice picture <laughs> My finished berries, that turned out okay. Enjoyed these watercolors very much. And I have a cute little mini. Now let's go over the rest of the items I got from Jason and it's these charcoals. Now I, in the middle of getting out my charcoal box here, and I'm gonna show you this, there's going to be a video posted next, or in a couple of weeks, I had to declutter my charcoal and graphite box. That video will be posted pretty soon, just to get the lid back on it. I mean, it was a, I didn't need that much charcoal and graphite, right? So that is coming soon. So we're going to go over what these look like on some toned paper and put them away in my nice little box since I spent so much of my afternoon decluttering this. All right, mainly I'm just uh, testing them out. Very nice. Now, are these both the same hardness? Yep, it just says HB. Now, the black ones are 2B. This 
this has a very nice consistency. I like those a lot, actually. I mean, after a while, you've tried so many charcoals that, you know, they're all about the same in the end. But uh, I enjoyed that quite a bit. They all felt really nice. I don't think I've ever done just a drawing with a different color, like the sanguine. That might be something I challenge myself with this year. Now, I've done sketches, preliminary setups to pictures, uh, maybe even a underpainting situation with the different colors. But I've never done a whole piece. Maybe that's something I need to do this year. So, yeah, here's the colors. They felt very nice. I'm going to put them away in this box. And plan a project. So I'm going to put these along with my other ones. These had a much nicer feel than the ones I already own. I can... And I will put my soft applicators, I use those for a lot of things, in the bottom for when I need it. And there we go. So, I hope you enjoyed this My Husband Buys My Art Supplies. Just something different I thought I'd make a video about. It did prompt me to make a declutter video, which I think I'm going to keep up in a little bit of a series and go through all of my things. And if I'm not using them, hand them off to somebody that will. There's no need to hoard art supplies. Well, thank you guys for joining me today, uh, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!